discussion. So now the floor is open for whoever has a question. For example, Robinson was about to ask a question. Yeah. Yes. So my question uh, goes to Enoch. And uh, if you check your slides, you 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 use the Vrishna Monte Carlo. The question I want is that how how, how do you choose your trial wave function? How do you how do you how do you choose your trial wave function? Very good question. So basically, you need to choose a trial wave function that is expressive enough, and that can be efficiently um, computed, right? And you can sample very efficiently for it from it. Right? So we choose neural network because they are universal approximators. Is the reason one of the reason we then now there is a zoo of neural networks uh, answer that you can choose, right? Yeah. And the first one that was used in the context of quantum simulations was resting those machines. But we didn't choose that because of uh, the need of devising either a markup chain to, to, to simulate it, right? And since we are simulating glassy systems, we expect that when you enter into the glassy phase, I mean, most of your, your, your proposal to, to flip a spin are going to be rejected. So we chose to, to have an autoregressive model which generate like samples exactly without uh, I mean, without any kind of autocorrelation function. That's that was the, the main motivation behind it. And as I, I motivated, they are powerful to encode correlation. Like what when we see in machine translation or speech recognition, we see the same thing for spin systems. So both. I, I didn't show results on long range spin model, but we consider that spin model like the Shreto Kipatuk spin model, which is an easing glass. Right, and that has, uh, which is uh, believed to be entry complete, and we found also quite good uh, results using uh, the RNA code function. So it's mostly the flexibility and the ability to, to compute it efficiently, right? And for the Vaishnav uh, class scanning, we need to compute the entropy, and for the entropy, you really need to have a probability distribution. But if you choose an answer like like the RBM that is not directly normalized on CNN. I mean, it would be hard to compute uh, the entropy curve, right? So this, this was like uh, one of the motivation of uh, choosing this kind of autoregressive neural network. I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, that is, uh, it's okay. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for, for, for the lecture. Uh, okay, uh, please uh, Order. I have a question. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. Hello? Who, who has a question? Yeah, can Machuan, you Machuan. Your, yeah. your video, please, so that we can see you. Uh, okay, great. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, my question is, uh, uh, to the first speaker of the day, we will talk about uh, the quantum thermodynamic. So I mentioned uh, some few uh, things about adiabatic shortcut. So the question is, uh, I think that adiabatic shortcut necessarily induce in uh, non-adiabatic no, uh, long way. And so if this is true, a full honing machine may include both adiabatic and non-adiabatic process. So my question is how to minimize the energy cost during non-adiabatic long way in adiabatic shortcut. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the idea is when you start to run your engine, so as you mentioned in the long time limit, then you still have non adiabatic and then uh, yeah, the adiabatic contribution. So, but this is minimal. And the idea is you want to engineer your machine in a such a way that using the shortcut protocol, so the shortcut to adiabaticity, what it does is that it suppresses the non adiabatic contribution. So, it reduces the entropy production rate. And thereby, once you reduce this, then you can have a better performance. But in a very short time, this is not useful because the cost that you will use to generate this kind of uh, protocol will outweigh the work friction that you will have in your system in a short, cut, in a short time process. So, but intermediate, it gives you some advantage 
in a very long time, two of them, it doesn't matter you, whether you do it adiabatically or non-adiabatical. So, but what happens if you want to do it very fast? Then if you want to be better, you have to do put some control in your system. Okay. So um, what happened if in the system we have uh, a source of decay? So so that the, maybe the overall Hamiltonian become a non-emission of the system. You still have some way to yeah, construct shortcut for non-emission uh, operator. So, but for heat engine, I haven't looked at this to know, okay, how does this influence? But you can construct this shortcut to adiabasticity because basically what you need is that you have your eigen uh, states yeah, solution of your system. And then with this eigenstate solution, you use it with each time derivative to construct this shortcut to uh, adiabatic uh, city protocol. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. But uh, I really think that uh, practically uh, you may need to increase some dissipation. So, uh, but Ali, uh, Mention that question. If uh, the system maybe you have a non harmonic uh, oscillator, uh, what will happen? So, an harmonic system. So, thank you. You have a non -harm harmonic uh, oscillator. The only challenge you have is just how do you construct? Yeah, the cost of the protocol will be more challenging. So, like at moment, uh, we try to have a system like you have a hybrid of. Uh, oscillator and two-level system like the Jens Cummings model. Yeah. So in this situation, we can construct the shortcut. So, but now what we are, we have to find a parameter range where you can actually run your engine. So, and once we are, yeah, we have already like some area we can do this and then calculate the costs and then you can still perform engine cycle. So like having non-harmonicity or non-linear system is not a, yeah, a problem for the control. I think it's more of problem, maybe if you are thinking of implementation. Yeah, yeah. how you interpret this like in experiments. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. Thank, okay. You. Thank, you. So, thank you. So are there other questions? So I, I would like to ask. I, ah, okay, no, go ahead, yes, Steve. I, I, no, go okay. ahead and then I have a, a comments, yeah. Okay, I would like to ask uh, one or two questions to the last two speakers. So more or less, you presented two uh, new methods to obtain the ground state energy for a spin, spin system, more or less. And the last speaker actually mentioned the possibility of, not the possibility that what about the system for what about more complex Hamiltonian. So I'm going to take you a little bit out of your field. And if you are thinking about a molecular system like either big molecule or small or big molecules or materials, how efficiently do you think the method you just presented are going to be able to obtain the ground state energy of those systems? I, I know that there have been a few papers in the past two or three years where those ideas of machine learning and uh, um, those type of development have been applied to um, molecular system, but what about the method that you just presented today? So let me, let me start. Huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. So first of all, I mean, the, the method that I presented is to, to find the ground state typically of like classical systems, right? But in, in the annealing, you can stop somewhere. I mean, you have to stop somewhere and then uh, you can uh, find the ground state of, of, of a quantum system. So for a molecular system, what usually people try to do is that, I mean, if you maybe it's better to work into a formulation of uh, the Hamiltonian that is in the second quantized form, right? So if you have your molecular system, you write your Hamiltonian in first quantization, and then you basically write it in second quantization. There are some, some um, techniques like, like, like uh, the gravet kitaev method uh, that allow you to map it into speed, spin systems. And when you have the formulation of a Hamiltonian in this kind of spin system, I mean, you, you can basically um, find the ground state. You don't even need annealing to find the ground state. I mean, you just could use Vaishwam Monte Carlo. And uh, I think in the paper I mentioned by Mohammed, 
I, I don't I think he used he actually find the, the ground state of the hydrogen atom by doing this kind of mapping, if if I remember well. And yeah, so it's it's pretty possible to, to find it. Um yeah, I think maybe answer Glenn's question that methods also for, for quantum circuits to, to find it using if not QA, maybe variational quantum against on 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 real quantum computer. Typically they do the same mapping, right? They 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 go from the the first quantization formulation of the Hamiltonian to a spin configuration to a spin formulation and then they basically simulate the system. Maybe it can okay. to say. Yeah. So yeah, so I'll just uh, add a few comments. So thank you, Stel. So what Estelle said is actually correct indeed. And uh, I'll just comment that uh, there have been recently some advances in uh, bringing uh, the uh, transforming the classic the op optimization problem of optimizing uh, uh, for a molecule which is quantum into classical into a classical problem on which then one can apply annealing. So this uh, kind of approach now it's uh, actually studied, but again as this or as uh, optimizing directly the problem with. Um, uh, with uh, the quantum Hamiltonian, uh, the performance of uh, current uh, available devices, devices are not yet uh, compatible with uh, classical optimization algorithms. So this is uh, uh, a work we are actually trying to push forward both simultaneously, let's say, various group, both theory and, uh, and uh, experiments such that uh, it's possible actually to have uh, competitive uh, solvers that are using this kind of algorithm because ideally one would hope to exploit a quantum speed up or use a quantum speed up arising from this kind of devices. Okay. Um, Ali, you, you had a question? So, so Glenn, how many years do you think uh, uh, are we from, from this reality? Yeah. Okay. Is it is so it that, is it decades or years? Basically, this is the question. That, that's a good question, and uh, I think I think the answer is it depends. There are decades from uh, having the ability to perform a full general computation where you give me a problem and uh, I solve it, and uh, I think we are years and. Uh, we are not far from having a uh, uh, solution for tailored problems. So that there are, there could be some problems which can be solved uh, if more efficiently with uh, the quantum device. For example, um, yeah, for example, like uh, the Google group showed that there is uh, this, uh, Proposed a kind of problem where he, where the media machine was solving that problem more efficiently than classical algorithm. Uh, yeah. Previously, Fari proposed a quantum algorithm that could outperform classical ad algorithm in uh, solving uh, some a kind of linear equation. Then again, the classical algorithm overtook it again. But uh, still, when we are talking about single uh, tailored problem, on some problem there is competition. When we talk about uh, a general purpose uh, solver, like a computer, there is, I think we are pretty far from that. But I see. Yeah. Okay, okay. Can, uh, can I, thanks for your answers. Can, um, Steve, can I just uh, follow yeah. up with Estelle? Yeah, Estelle, uh, um, I know we had, uh, we had discussed this many times before, but I wanted to see if you have given it more thought. You know, of, of course, the, in, in, um, in the problem of polymer physics, I'd say in, in biological systems, this idea of um, the challenge of uh, detecting the low energy uh, structures is has been you know people have been thinking and working on this for for decades. Um, do you see a possibility of uh, applying these types of techniques that you, you're working on to those classes of problems, or do you really see them more as um, Doing more fundamental ideas on proof of concept models and you know uh, toy model Hamiltonians. Uh, do you do you really see a possibility of uh, of making the bridge? Yeah, I 
see actually a possibility of making a bridge. I mean, what I am going for is to solve real world optimization problems. Now we are kind of investigating a couple of real world optimization problems with this technique, things like portfolio optimizations and, and stuff like that. So now for the protein, I, I, I believe that there's a lattice formulation of protein folding and stuff like that. So I, I believe that like RNA will actually be quite good to try on it because um, I think somebody mentioned about what happens when you have degenerate grounds and stuff like that. So with the autoregressive sampling, the moment where you are able to capture all the modes of the distribution in the weights and the biases of your RNA, you basically can sample degenerate ground state without any problem, right? So you, you won't have the problem of having to cross a barrier like, like in the minimum Carlo simulation, right? But if you can capture the mode, of course. So for, for, for a protein, it will be like capturing different conformation of, of the protein. And for sure, it will be pretty much interesting to, to see, um, to test that kind of problem on, on protein folding. Yeah, OK, cool. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Um, Seth? Um, hi, yeah, my name is Seth. Um, so maybe this is more to maybe Estelle also. So you mentioned that um, in your um, in your work you considered only Hamiltonians, which has not got the same problem, or wave functions with no same problem. So, but in general for quantum systems, you can have it comes with like a complex wave function. So in that case, I know mostly like the Monte Carlo techniques don't work. So are there techniques? maybe in your field that tries to address these kind of problems? Yeah, that's an excellent question, Sid. <laughs> yeah. So because I had 20 minutes, I had to constrain my talk not to talk about the non, um, uh, I mean, problems with sign problems. So if you permit me, I can share a couple of slides with where we have results on that. Is it OK? Sure. I mean, I'm OK with it, but yeah, sure. All yeah. right, so if I go back to my PowerPoint, and I, 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 sorry, sharing will stop right Let's try to go back there. And uh, I do this and I come here. So yeah, this is basically a way in which you can capture. So if you check Mohammed paper, he basically write, because I told you VMC is not like other quantum methods, right? Where you, it doesn't have like an intrinsic sign problem. So this is the way you can represent like the amplitude of a wave function of the so-called stochastic Hamiltonian is an Hamiltonian that doesn't have a sign problem that the wave, the amplitude of a wave function is positive. But if you want to have a complex wave function like you mentioned, right? So you can have basically out of your RNA cell, one that produce like positive amplitudes and one that produce some sort of phase, right? And so you can use the soft sign layer that produces the phases, and then you can have actually a complex wave function. So they try in, the, in, in their paper on some uh, sign probiotic uh, problem. So in this case, you will learn this, this sign continuously, but if it's a complex with any kind of phase, you can learn the phase as well. So um, let's see. So this is how you, you estimate the, 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 the energy inversion Monte Carlo. Since the samples are drawn according to absolute value square of the probability distribution, this probability is always positive by construction, but the local quantity depends not on the probability, but on actually the, the value of the wave function. So this is where you need to have either the sign or the, 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 the correct phase of the problem. So we tested that on uh, non-stochastic Hamiltonian. So basically you just have to put a plus here. If you put a plus here, you basically have sign problem in, in, in the ground state wave function. And we found that by looking at, at the variational energy respect to this parameter, we can capture it exactly, right? So we also did annealing okay. on, on, on those kind of problems, and this, so this kind of driver and Newtonian where you have this kind of couplings. So these two couplings have sign problems. And we find that basically you can have the residual energy going down as a number of annealing steps. This is very interesting because actually this paper is a paper by D-Wave where they actually try to implement non-stochastic Hamiltonian because of basically the claim of this paper saying that um, you can have an, an exponential enhancement in quantum annealing by using non-stochastic Hamiltonians. But in, in, in this paper, they, only, they can only do two qubits. I mean, it's pretty hard to, to, to implement this kind of YY coupling, but in our method, this is like a 64 spin simulation 
This is like the first simulation of the non stochastic Hamiltonian up to six is possible. You can't do that with any other kind of um, Monte Carlo method. Right? Yeah. So yeah, you can uh, basically, I mean, use this formulation to simulate both complex Hamiltonians and Hamiltonians have some products. I hope that answers your question. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I'll look at the paper, thank you. So there was um, also a question in the chat for the speakers and it was from Omololo Akinojo who asked about uh, how to get excited states from the method you described. So you mentioned you're interested in the ground state. What about the excited state? Do you have an idea? Uh. Is the question for, for who is the question? So, for any, uh, any one of you, actually. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, so uh, obtaining uh, excited state actually with uh, the method I discussed now. So with uh, annealing evolution, it's quite, uh, I'll say directly, it's more challenging because uh, um, you are not protected by gaps with the ground state uh, as much. Usually ground states uh, are further than uh, from the other states, so the evolution can be faster. So technically, the, the scheme I described can be used uh, with, uh, also with an excited state. So the adiabatic theorem still uh, works, but the performance of the algorithm will be worse. So yes, so th that's why it's usually used for ground states. So there is no way of controlling that you get precisely an excited state rather than the again. Ground state. If you slow down, you have to, as, as I said, when, when the gap is when the during the evolution there are uh, places where the gaps are uh, becoming smaller, you have to slow down. So if you slow down sufficiently, so you take a sufficient amount of time, at least with uh, the direct annealing evolution, uh, you can uh, obtain, uh, uh, you can also obtain and start from an excited state. You can also remain in the excited state and obtain an excited state. However, the gaps you will encounter uh, are, are most probably smaller than the ones you would find uh, in, uh, when doing the same process for the ground state. So you would have to uh, have a slower dynamics and a slower algorithm. Whereas for the variational uh, algorithms such as uh, QAOA, uh, I must say that uh, there I'm not, uh, uh, at the moment I'm not aware of uh, uh, any uh, application of the algorithm to find the uh, excited states because there you have to minimize the energy variationally and for excited states it's a bit more challenging. I'm not aware of that, okay, but maybe Estelle can add something if she knows. I think for variational Monte Carlo, people have used other cost function that could somehow project out the ground state. I'm not also very much familiar with it, um, but in quantum chem chemistry, usually they, I mean, they do version Monte Carlo first, and then they do something like diffusion Monte Carlo to have more exact results. And then I think uh, in diffusion Monte Carlo also, there's a way of, of um, projecting out the ground state um, and then obtaining the excited state. But I'm not familiar with that. I, I am not familiar with that at all. Are there any more questions? Well, if not, I would like to thank uh, all the speakers for this very interesting session. We will end. Uh... Uh, uh, Steve, I'd like to just, um, I want, you know, if we were have, if we were at ICTP, we would have taken a picture near the sea. Uh, um, but obviously we cannot take a picture near the sea, but instead we can take uh, a virtual picture. Uh, so I'd like you all to turn on your cameras and I will take three pictures. Uh, uh, just, just so that you know, we can say we took a picture. So everyone, on your camera. Should we smile? Don't be smile. Don't be shy. 
Okay, hold on. I'll wait for a couple. Everyone, turn on your cameras. Not everyone is turning the cameras on. Okay, here we go. Wait, Ali, but I think I'm screen shot. Why is something? Yeah, well, this is more fun. Come on. Okay. Great. Everyone smile. Thank you. Very good. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. For some reason, this my the second group of people don't have all their cameras off, but fine. Anyway. All right. Thank you very much. Um, great. So uh, thanks again, Steve, for, for hosting the session. Thanks to all of you for joining. Uh, you. And um, uh, we'll see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central European time.